What's up, y'all? Rap Critic here, and this was a request by Wu Du. And if you'd like to request a song for me to review, head on over to my Patreon, where you can see reviews early for only $1 per episode, plus see exclusive content like podcasts, music, and articles. So let's talk about Aesop Rock. Releasing his first solo LP in 1997, Aesop has always been a cryptic lyricist, using his blaring baritone and extensive vocabulary to weave intricate stories that make you think more deeply about the aspect of the human condition. What? Oh, my bad, excuse me, let me explain. This isn't some sitcom misunderstanding where I confused one similar sounding rap name with another. I just, I, I don't want to talk about ASAP Rocky. Not that I hate him or anything, it's just that, well. They say money make a nigga act nigga rich, but at least a nigga nigga rich. He d didn't strike me as someone I personally needed to remember. Plus, on his biggest track, he was completely washed out by three other more famous capable rappers, including 2 Chains, and he only did the hook. I love bad bitches, that's my fucking problem. And yeah, I like the fuck I got a fucking problem. Although, to be fair, 2 Chains is the only person you could have gotten to convincingly say something that awkwardly unclever. Like, it doesn't even register as a pun the first time you hear it. But, okay, if your thing is obsessing over fashion labels and designer drugs, have at it. Aesop Rocky's your guy. But, whereas some would describe his soundscape as atmospheric and ethereal, I find it... Yeah. Oh. Kind of boring, to be completely honest. Where some seem to hear the soundtrack to a dice-rolling, glossy Las Vegas casino acid trip, I only hear a hungover day drinker on his 81st spin on the slot machines. It feels tired, disaffected, and overall, it's just not that engaging for me, at least from what I've heard from that album. Of course, I haven't yet heard the song I'm reviewing today, but surely it won't be enough of a perspective changer that I'll actually have to reevaluate him as an artist. <sighs> Fine, it's good. It's... It's one of the most engaging personifications of the inner turmoil of modern superstardom I've heard in a long time. God damn it, I hate when this happens. I mean, not that I don't want an artist to be more ambitious on their follow-up albums. It's just, now I gotta take it seriously and do research and shit. When I did, things started to really make sense, though. You see, in 2015, one of Rocky's longtime friends, ASAP Yams, died at only age 26 from an overdose on cough syrup. After which, ASAP apparently retooled his forthcoming album and dedicated it to him, even wearing Yams' signature birthmark on the album cover, releasing this song as the next single. And, uh, I think it's safe to say some important things were on his mind. Every day I spend my time drinking wine, feeling fine. Oh, and that's technically not a sample on the hook there. They actually got Rod Stewart in to re-record his feature from In a Broken Dream, a track from 1972 he did with the Australian band Python Lee Jackson. Every day I spend my time drinking wine, feeling fine. But on this remake, the age you can hear in his voice adds to the resigned cynical worldview of a man who's seen it all in the music business, but is still trying to figure things out. Waiting here to find the sign that I can understand. However, it then fades over to Miguel to do the second iteration of the hook, as if the rock and roll musicians of the 70s and these modern superstars are connected through that mutual feeling of emotional burnout from stardom. It's like the modern version of Walk This Way. But you know, if the song were about psychological coping mechanisms. Off again did he go to another dimension, my mind, body, soul, and prison, my eye. Probably going ballistic, but listen, beat the system, go to business, blow the sentence, go to prison, go to church, and pray the Father, love, forgive us. Hypnosis, overdose on potions, adjusting to the motions and getting out of my emotions. And throughout the verse, you can hear him going on this emotional journey, cycling from melancholic and contemplative to Yeah, I'm a piece of shit. Uh -huh. I know I plead the fifth. I tell a holla if you need some dick. Uh, it, hmm. And only God can judge me. Yeah. And he don't like no ugly. I look so fucking good, most likes are fucking. Well, maybe not if you call him that. But, okay, it gets better in the second verse, where the beat switches up like the LSD tab just kicked in, as he becomes even more lucid about his thoughts. You know, I'll say this much. From as little as I know about ASAP Rocky and fashion in general, I have noticed his fashion sense is atypical of other, more hyper-masculine rappers, going against the grain like Kanye and Cameron were doing by wearing pink and polo and backpacks and stuff. Again, I don't know much about the fashion world myself, so it all just kind of comes off as generic upper-class cosmopolitan stuff you find in magazines you feel too poor to even look at. But you know, if he's inspiring more black teens to be eccentric about the way they express themselves in fashion, hey, I can't hate on that. Although, I don't think anyone's gonna be going for the dug-up Michael Jackson corpse look anytime soon. Then again, the fashion world is... 
pretty freaking weird, so what do I know? He then ends his verse by saying you can basically only find bliss by deluding yourself, so yeah, you might as well be happy with that. The only key to survive and get a piece of the pie is to agree with a lot or just believe it facade, bitch. And I'll be fine just to drink in my wine, bitch. Hey man, as long as it's not lean, have at it. Seriously, this shit has killed a lot of rappers, including the DJ that made it popular. So like, let's... Let's, let's slow this shit down, y'all. Overall, though, I'd actually give the song a 5 out of 5. I gotta say, I'm a sucker for anyone who takes the chance of remaking a song to really use the rap verses and updated production to elevate the themes of a more obscure joint like this. And while the video, of course, is kind of silly and over the top with its prosthetics and Dewey Cox level imitation of the tortured musician biopic but told backwards, it complements the weathered rock star persona and Rod Stewart's voice perfectly. And, and coupled with the lyrics in the song, it feels more like the truth said in jest, a reflection of Aesop's own fears of losing control of his lifestyle. As he said in one of his interviews, I don't want to be considered a celebrity. Because it's fun, I'm not going to lie, but you can't turn it off. You can't turn it off. You know, that phrase especially stuck with me as I was listening to this song. Because, yeah, when no one tells you no anymore and you got the world ready to give you what you want because money allows you access to whatever you want, how does your life not turn into the stereotypical biopic? It's just what naturally happens in a society where we deify celebrities. I know I plead the fifth. Again, it, not a very subtle music video. Well, that's the episode. And if you want to hear this, plus other songs I've been into lately, check out my digital radio show on Station Hit. We talk about music, listen through albums, and check out new hip-hop from the past week on Thursdays at 7 p.m. So get the Station Hit app and search my channel, Rap Critic, one word, if you want to join me. And of course, please like, comment, subscribe, check out my Rap Critic merch on Teespring, check out my Patreon if you want to make requests and peep what I'm doing behind the scenes. Well, I'm the Rap Critic. You don't have to like an artist, but you know, sometimes you can like their songs.